What's up YouTube? So in this video, I wanna give you a full rundown of how to make your own multi-sample instruments in SynthMaster 3. So this is part of their latest update where they introduced a couple of really cool features, including this whole new multi-sample editor. And one of the coolest things is that it allows you to export what you create as a .sfz file. And so that means we can load it into Serum or various other multi-sample hosts to use in kind of more complex patches. I'm gonna to stick to just creating the sounds and how the multi-sample patch works in this video. However, I'm gonna follow up with a couple of other kind of more uh, tutorials in SynthMaster 3 about the wavetable editor and stuff like that. Anyway, this video was sponsored by KV331, the creators of SynthMaster 3. However, I'm focusing more on the tutorial side of things today. I'm gonna to show you how it works and that kind of thing. Okay, so with that out the way, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, the first thing that we're going to want to do when we open up SynthMaster 3 is initialize the preset. We can right click over here and just say in preset. And the multi-sample system kind of lives inside the oscillator system. From an outsider looking in, there's not much differentiation in between whether you're using just a single waveform, whether you're using a wavetable, multi-sample, and that kind of thing. They all kind of function very similarly on the surface. However, you can dive in here and create new waveforms, new samplers, new multi-samples and stuff. And then it kind of opens up this more advanced menu, which you can kind of build the sounds, the patches, and then jump back to the basic performance window where you do the layering and that kind of thing, which is pretty cool. So here it prompts us to, you know, whether we want to import a sample or a, a .sfz file. For now, we're not gonna do this because we're actually gonna create one from scratch. And so I wanna talk you through a couple of different scenarios depending on what kind of samples you've recorded. Say for example, you just have a set of different notes that you've recorded from an instrument. So here I've got six samples, which I've recorded from a flute. We can say, for example, if we have a bunch of chromatic notes, it's not gonna work in this exact scenario and I'll explain why. If we import like this, we can use this to kind of chromatically import the samples, right? Because Bitwig is um, adjusting these based on alphabetical values, it's imported them that way and not actually chromatic, if you know what I mean. But let's just say, for example, if you had a bunch of sounds there that was chromatic, you could just import it that way. So right at the top, if we select all of these and we hover over right at the top, it's got this thing called automatic import. So for these kind of more complex, you know, say for example, we have here uh, 24 samples, but in the next folder, we're gonna times that by four. So it becomes even more samples, right? Stuff like this, which is more complex sample libraries that you've recorded, this kind of automatic import tools are really, really cool. So I believe what it's doing is it's reading through the file name and it's picking up, for example, if you've written there A sharp four, C5, etc dynamic one, two, three, and then it and then it arranges it automatically, which is insanely cool. Okay, so now say for example, we wanted to make this sound a little bit more natural. Then the trick is to actually record in dynamic notes. So for example, here I have six samples. In this folder, I think 24 samples. So those six notes each have four dynamic layers. You can see here, let's just go to the F4, which is the low note, low note. F4, dynamic one, F4, dynamic two, F4, dynamic three, dynamic four. And that's me playing the flute harder and harder, right? So this would actually work if, if we wanted to import this using this uh, import system. If we hover and we go up into this part here, you'll see it's the same key import. And now what it allows us to do is move this, drop it like this, and now it's automatically linked these velocities. Another cool thing is here we have all of these regions are named and um, visible here on the left-hand side. So we can quickly see what dynamic layer it is, uh, what, RR1, which is round robin, which I'm gonna explain shortly. 
And what noted is directly here, we don't have to faff around here, which one is this, which one is that, you know? We know we've selected all of these F4s, um, which it'll become very apparent like in the next part that we're doing, but I just figured, let me just uh, preempt this. Okay, so there's also this extend key and extend velocity range. So instead of filling up the gaps manually, it allows us to actually just press the button and it automatically fills in the gaps, which is really, really handy. Um, and it can do the same thing with velocity, but it automatically does that with the import anyway. It just makes this whole system like automatic import so quick, nice and easy to do. Export as SFZ file. You've got it to use in other stuff, but you can also create really complex multi-layer patches directly inside SynthMaster. And so now we've created a system where the harder we hit the key, the more velocity we apply. It'll play different samples that we've recorded. I mean, you're not limited to doing it like this, where the actual sample is playing the instrument louder. You can do all sorts of different things this way, um, like different sounds, depending on how hard you hit it and stuff. But for kind of more realistic organic instruments, this is the way to go. That's cool. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna talk through the export process quickly, how to export an SFZ, because you can use this. This is, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, if we look at Serum, the LE stuff is just velocity sensitive. It doesn't actually have round robin layers and that kind of thing. So this is a very common way of kind of supplying a sample library, just different velocities, different notes, and that's that, right? So here at the top left, let's click Save. And what we want to do is we want to save SFZ plus samples. And so what this is going to do is this is now going to nest. It's going to copy wherever those samples are on your hard drive, um, which happens to be in this folder. But it's better to do it this way because then you can kind of save it and supply it as a complete thing in case you're dragging samples from all over the place, right? Let's just create a new folder here and just call this SFZ examples. One. And so now it should have taken all those samples like wherever they are on the hard drive and actually copied it into that folder that we just created, right? So it helps to also create a new folder because it's just gonna put all the samples like next to the SFZ file in the folder that you choose. So it definitely helps to create a new folder, put it in there, put everything together, right? And then in something like Serum, it's as simple as setting the oscillator over to multi-sample mode, load SFZ, load it in. We have it there, right? Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the next level of, of complexity is round robins or random samples. So what that means is for each velocity layer and for each key, you record a number of different samples. So in this instance, I've chosen four. So for each velocity, there's four. And for each velocity and each key, there's sort of uh, four random samples. So this is really, really good for like drum sounds and percussive sounds, but also just to add an extra level of sort of naturalness to the sound. So here what I've done is I've actually added the round robin layer as a prefix on the sample. If we put the round robin layer as a prefix, it allows us to actually load all of the samples in one go if we just select it all and drag it in. So that's what's happened here. And so here we're gonna actually have to go in one by one and adjust the uh, randomization settings, but that's fine. I'm gonna fast forward that part, but I'm gonna just show you a few times. Okay, so here let's select everything. Let's go over to trigger. And we want to turn the type over to either round robin or random. So round robin basically sequences number one, then number two, then number three, then number four. Random basically just picks a random number. So again, it kind of depends what kind of sound you're creating. I think random is always going to give us a slightly more natural sound. And then here we want to go in and actually set these. So for example, round robin two needs a sequence two. Round robin three needs a sequence three. Round robin four 
needs the sequence for. Okay, so we've actually done all of F here. So I'm just gonna play this a few times and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So you can see it's like almost every single time we hit the note, we're getting a slightly different sound and that's just gonna to add to the kind of naturalness of the sort of organic recording that we're creating. We can actually go and select all of them like this, holding control. We should be all done. So let's go ahead and save. Save FFC and SFZ and samples. Let's put some effects on here. So I'm gonna jump into the effects. We can actually just right click here and say delay. Let's do a reverb as well. So we can also create key switches here by assigning the different keys, giving it a name. We can also assign a MIDI CC trigger. So for example, values above a certain number that you put in here on this CC will trigger group one or trigger group two, etc., etc. So you can kind of set up these more complex trigger systems as well, which is really, really cool. And then lastly, you can also do release triggers. So for example, I mean, this might not work logically, but we can set these staccatos to release. And then when we lift the key, it's gonna trigger the note. So for example, like with a guitar or something, you may want a slight pluck or some kind of sound when you lift from the note. And that'll just add to that kind of realism. For that though, you often need to add extra release to actually hear it. So the last example that I want to show you guys is how to create key switches or dynamic groups. So with this kind of thing, I like to set it up quite low down on the keyboard. So not actually relevant to the actual keys, but it's just because I don't have a big 88 key keyboard, right? And so I'm quite limited in the octaves that I can use. And the key switches are made for uh, the octave minus one. So C minus one to B minus one. So what I'll usually do is I'll set it up so that the samples are playing within the region of like C0 and around there. And so that gives me the ability to one octave switch between the different key switches with the other octave actually play the different sounds. So what we can actually do is we can actually extend this up just in case. So we, we have like an extra octave above it if we do wanna go that far, right? And so here what I wanna do is to actually just create the different groups quickly and we can run through um, how to actually move to the lower key. Here, to actually get to the lower octave, you can use this menu at the bottom here and drag it around. And let's just drop it around C0 or so. Let's create another empty group. Let's call this Staccatissimo. And then the final group, which we will call Flutters. And so now for each of these groups, we actually need to go into the trigger and assign a different key over here. So here let's assign key one and let's give this the name legato. Let's assign key switch C sharp minus one and let's call this 
staccato. D1, staccatissimo. And then D sharp one, flutters. So if they have different names and they're assigned to different keys, it should do the rest of the work for us. You don't actually have to assign a name. You can just assign a key to the groups and then it should all automatically work. So what I'm gonna do is just drop this in here and put a little bit of reverb on here or a lot of reverb on here. And with my left hand, I can play the different articulations. And with my right hand, I can kind of choose what notes to play, if that makes sense. So we can do the flutters by holding the D sharp or going with uh, just the C and then doing legatos. Or you can modulate between them for like more expressive articulations, right? That's actually so cool, so expressive, really, really cool to play. Even if, you know, with this exact patch, I didn't just kind of duplicate the previous patch because it was getting a little bit complicated, but we could have those levels of velocity, those levels of round robin and those different articulations and stuff to really create like the ultimate multi-sample instrument. And we can then also layer it with actual oscillator voices like... Uh, wavetables and granular stuff and that kind of stuff I'm going to go into in the in the next video on Synthmaster so stay tuned for that and yeah I think that's about it I hope you guys enjoyed that let me know what you think in the comments and as always if you haven't yet please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button I'll see you guys next time cheers